I think it's important for uh, parents to know uh, that there are programs available. Some of our tax money isn't wasted, and I'll mention things like the WIC program. And, and I think young parents should certainly look into, is there some help from the city or from the state? Uh, and this is good help. I, I, I like to see our tax money when it, when it goes towards helping children or families or, or uh, uh, social, social problems. Uh, when did your infants come off of formula and go on to whole milk? Because that's a, that's a big economic move for sure. At we'll a year. Yeah, yeah. At about a year. Right. See, I, I think I cheat a little bit. And I, I will still uh, mention that in my experience, I think it's, it's all right to try whole milk as early as eight or nine months. If we have a good family history, it isn't loaded with allergies, food allergies and asthma, if the infant seems to have had a very good digestive system through those first several months, they haven't been allergic, they haven't had colic, they haven't been really gassy or spitty. And uh, it doesn't take long to find out that you were wrong uh, if the baby with a, a early trial of milk with a small amount starts spitting up and getting rashy and gassy and you know they're not ready. and. Uh, and we go back to the formula and we don't try it again until a year. Our dietician that was on the last program, our two dietitians, uh, one of them mentioned evaporated milk, which used to be a formula uh, 20, 25 years ago, infants would go home from the hospital on evaporated milk. It is a very uh, nourishing formula. It's very economical. It has to be watered down. You have to put about a ratio of, of 12 or 13 ounces of the evaporated milk to about 19 ounces of water, which is like a can of evaporated milk, a can and a half of water, and about two tablespoons of something like caro syrup to add sugar to get up to about 20 calories per ounce. It fell out of, uh, it isn't fashionable, it isn't in, it doesn't have the vitamins, but certainly after six months or at nine months, it's a, it's a thought. I think to, it's an economic move. It is good. You have to vitamin supplement it. But again, I think it's a thought. I think getting the solid foods going at uh, as early as three or four months, certainly at six months, they're going to get more calories from solid food, and that's going to cut back on the, on the amount of formula that's used. And certainly, uh, the dietitian, as again, the last program mentioned making your own foods so that you don't have to pay. Did you get into making well, your own foods? Aaron, we never made a single food. I bought baby foods for wherever I went all the time, for mm -hmm. the whole year, I think. But then with the triplets, we were buying 50, 60, 70 jars of it at a time, and, and we thought we should just use this blender we got for our wedding <laughs> that we, we never tell used. We today what they actually ate. They, and we would put cringe. everything in the blender. Some of it came out purple. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but they, they didn't notice. They all. didn't know. So. No, they <laughs> were <laughs> hungry and <laughs> down with the purple food. They ate everything right from the blender. Yes, yep. and that was certainly a cost Everything saving. that we cooked, carrots, potatoes, everything, we would just put into the blender and they ate it. <laughs> uh, we, we uh, will, I will loosen up on the diet quite a bit uh, at six months uh, into a lot of table foods if they haven't been making their own foods. And a lot of the foods can be just mushed up with a fork at that mm -hmm. stage and, and mashed potatoes and plain yogurt with little baby fruit. and, and uh, the bland vegetables, the carrots and the green beans and the squash can be mashed up. And, and uh, I wanted to get to a few of the common problems. And, and I want to ask you right off, uh, what would you do to prevent diaper rashes starting right off from the beginning of those first weeks or months? Well, we buy the chubs, you know, the chubs, they're called chub wet ones. Mm -hmm. And they have uh, lanolin and aloe in it. And we use those, and we never get a diaper rash unless we run out. You know, the only time we've ever gotten a diaper rash in the last 10 years is if we used cloths, you know, like a, you know, a face cloth or a face like cloth or something mm -hmm. to clean them with, and that you just didn't get them totally clean or, or it didn't dry properly. But when we use those chub wet ones, we never get a diaper rash. Very good tip. <laughs> The Chubbs people should be happy to hear that too, I suppose. <laughs> Although we're not working on commission here, this is totally. Uh, I, I've often uh, felt too that with a newborn baby, the less you do, the better. That nature is very good at uh, taking care of itself. I, I think if we're a little bit too vigorous and enthusiastic and aggressive and wash them down with soap and water three or four times a day, we remove their own oils. I think keeping them dry as dry as possible. And I'll often say, don't use soap, just use warm water. Uh, use a medicated powder. You know, once you've 
washed them, rinsed them off, and dried them, to use a medicated powder to just keep their skin dry and cool. And then when they're going in for a longer sleep, I'll often mention putting Vaseline. If they are sleeping a four, or five, six, several hour stretch, to put some Vaseline on them. Because the baby could wet the very first uh, hour that they're in, and if they're sleeping several hours and they've got a urine or a bowel movement in direct contact with their skin without some protection, like Vaseline, uh, they're going to rash up. It won't be a bad rash, and, and you can go to work on it the next day and relieve it. But um, I think we, you know, sometimes they do get a rash. I think it's not the parent's fault, and the parent shouldn't feel guilty. I, I think sometimes the food goes through undigested and, and is irritating. I think sometimes they have a urine that's a little bit too strong and acidy, or they do wet and they're unprotected and they're in that urine for a long time or bowel movement, or they get a little uh, intestinal virus and have diarrhea, and the diarrhea bowel movement is very irritating. And I think sometimes, no matter what, the babies will get into a horrendous diaper rash. And uh, usually then you're in contact with the doctor. If, if you try all your tricks and you can't solve it, usually you're in contact with your doctor. And, and often it'll, it'll mean a prescription ointment or a prescription cream or a couple of prescription items that, that will take care of it. Um, first cold, I think, is going to happen. I, I don't think, maybe if we're in California or Florida, you could get through the first year without a cold, but not in New England. The few things that I, I have found helpful to mention with a first cold is, is I don't think parents have to rush to the drugstore at the first sneeze or the first sniffle or the first fever. And I don't think there's any need to panic either when the baby has a cold, even if they are a little feverish and fussy. I think you do the common sense things. I think you don't crank the heat up to 85 because that's going to make them stuffier. In fact, better to lower the temperature a little bit, uh, maybe down to 60 